You know, we are in a sermon series entitled Transform. And over the last several weeks, our theme verse comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, the 12th chapter. Paul writes, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Another translation says it like this, Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by changing the way you think. Be transformed by changing the way you think. Now, I sit back and I think about it. We all want God to change our circumstances, don't we? I mean, we want God to take away the pain. We want God to take away the hurt, for God to take away the sickness or the discomfort. I mean, we always want God to change our circumstances. I mean, and that's not bad. That's great. But I'll maintain that God is more interested in changing us than he is in changing our circumstances. I'll maintain that God is more interested in changing the way that we think about him, in changing the way that we think or view others and our world around us. He's more interested in changing the way we think than changing the circumstances in which we find ourselves. I mean, have you ever found yourself with some stinking thinking going on? You know, I mean, if I were to admit, in all honesty, I mean, I just, I just caught myself in this in like in the last week, where I know that the way I'm thinking is not right. I know the way that I'm thinking is not correct. It's not the truth. And no matter how hard I try, you know, do you ever think the more you think about something, the more you try not to think about it, the, the more you think about it? You know what I mean? And you try to change your stinking thinking, and it's not easy, is it? And I'd better say we've all been there where we, we look at our jobs, or we look at relationships, or we look at our family members, and we've got this thinking going on that we know is not the truth. Which brings me to the first point. Our thoughts have power, don't they? I mean, your thoughts have great power to influence your life. And that's why uh, Solomon, in all of his wisdom, in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, said this, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Above all else, I mean, can, can you see the intensity here? Above all else, guard your heart, because everything, you do flows from it. Now, the Old Testament is written in Hebrew, and the Hebrew word used for heart is the word leb, which is our inner person. It's our mind, our will. It's our understanding, our knowledge. It's our thinking. And so Solomon is saying, guard your heart, guard your knowledge, guard your thinking, the way that you view things, because everything flows from it. See, the power of your mind and your thoughts have tremendous ability to shape your life. And so if we want to experience some transformation in our life, we need to learn how to manage the way that we think. Because in all honesty, someone may have told you something that was a lie. I mean, they, they could have told you when you were a young child that, you know what, you're not pretty enough, you're not smart enough, you're not talented enough. And it could have been completely and totally false. It could have been a lie right from the very start. But yet we incorporate it into the way that we think, into the way that we view ourselves. And years later, even decades later, we're still acting on this false information that we received, even as children. And so Paul tells us, be transformed by changing the way that you think. I mean, our thoughts have tremendous power to shape our lives. Uh, secondly, I think we need to, to manage the way we think. We need to manage our mind because our mind is the battleground for sin. I mean, temptation is not something that just simply takes place out there in the world. Temptation takes place in our mind. It, it's the way that we think. I mean, St. Paul in Romans chapter 7 said it like this. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, Evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. I mean, what Paul is saying is this new creation in Christ. I mean, I'm excited to follow God's law. I'm excited to follow God's will. I want to live for Jesus, but, and that's a big but right there. I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. I mean, look at some of the terminology that Paul is using. I mean, he's talking about a spiritual battle that's taking place in our mind. He's using uh, terminology like war, like prisoner, like the law of sin. 
See, what Paul is saying is there's this spiritual battle that's going on in the way that you think, in the way that you view God, in the way that you view yourself and the world and others. And this battle is going on because your mind is like your greatest asset. And Satan wants to, to, to change the way that we think because he knows, my friends, whatever gets your attention gets you. 